You can't hear the music? No. What? No, the music is definitely playing. Okay, I, I can't hear it. Very interesting. Or maybe it's not playing. Is it playing? That's a good question. Hey, uh, Chad, is the music playing? Should be playing. No music. <laughs> How is there no music? Ah, oh, I get it. It's um, I get it. Mature. Absolutely. Okay. It's as always, guys, amateur hour. I forgot how the whole thing works while I was away, you know? <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> That's the real beginning right here. Too bad I can't cut that out, but it is what it is. Uh, we're live. We're going to talk about the brand new Tudor Black Bay 58 Bronzo Boutique Only Edition. Tudor dropping this piece uh, uh, today, earlier today at uh, 6 something a.m. in the morning, New York time. I already had... Uh, a conversation, an extensive conversation with uh, Perth Luxury and with a bunch of guys, with Mr. GMT. And uh, uh, I think when I saw this, I, I did kind of, if you watched yesterday's episode, I did kind of speculate about this watch. and I made certain, a few predictions. Uh, I don't know how correct or how... Uh, incorrect I was but uh, I learned something uh, I, I, I have a I have an incredible uh, thought about this why they did it so uh, but first I want everybody to please enter uh, answer the poll make sure that you answer the poll uh, in the chat uh, because I want to see what your guys' opinions are on this bronzo. And I have not Mr. GMT joining me. <laughs> Hello, not Mr. GMT. How are you doing? It's a disaster. Ooh, wow. So, uh, so is it is it disaster? What do you think? What do you think before before I reveal my my opinions on it? Listen, what do you there, think? Are, there are many more important things than uh, Tudor uh, watch release. Yeah. Um, oh, really? You know that uh, there there is a European Championship in real football, oh. and Germany just made it uh, by a couple of minutes uh, to come to the next round. We were almost out, and uh, I'm totally down with my nerves. So wow. this is Jonathan Quail Higgins or the uh, frog, frog Slaughterer. And I thought I'd pay a tribute to my friend, Mr. GMT, tonight. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so good. Yeah, you know, uh, I figured uh, I didn't... Uh, when I stopped by to get lunch earlier today uh, at my pizza, local pizza place, uh, there, was all, there was all these people. This whole crowd watching soccer, and I didn't know what was going on. But it's I guess football. that answers my question. <laughs> it's football. It's not soccer. Okay. okay. It's true football. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Well, congratulations. Thank you. On, uh, it was close. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's great. Okay. Let's talk okay. about what. Now let's talk about this Black Bay. Uh, Jonathan? Yep. 
Okay, Jonathan, Jonathan. What are you what are you what is your gut feeling? What what is your gut feeling? Not not very much uh, uh, I'm not feeling uh, the bronze at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I even find the uh, the bronze bracelet now even more pointless. That's mm -hmm. my take on it. Okay, okay, fair enough. I mean that this is a uh, kind of thing I think this is what I felt earlier this morning. Uh, let's just go really quickly here through uh, the innovations. Obviously, I don't know if you've seen this, but in this piece, Tudor drops a glide lock. This is, we're entering a new, it's, this is a turning point uh, for Tudor brand. And I feel like, if Omega wasn't afraid of uh, of the what was the, the the ceramic tutor, I think now it's, this is about time that they should be pooping their pants. Okay, because this this changes everything. This is a game changer. A glide lock that's so compact. I mean, this this glide lock looks better than the Rolex glide locks from just you know. Uh, it's kind of a, a a first look. Now, uh, let's see. Let's see what other specs. What do we got? So it's got five years warranty. Uh, your thirty nine mil case. Movement is Cosk certified, so it's in house uh, caliber. Uh, power reserve of seventy hours. Screw down crown. Waterproof to two hundred meters. We got the. Your standard bezel with aluminum. The dial got the 369, which uh, Tudor seems to have decided to reserve the 369s for their bronze releases. Uh, you got the domed sapphire crystal. The new bracelet, which they say has got the T-fit clasp with rapid adjustment and additional brown bronze jacquard fabric strap included so they're they're going to include a, a compliment i mean they're saying it's a complimentary strap but uh okay it's fair enough so you get so people will get two straps with this watch they will get the the full now not only i think this is the first uh the first i mean we might not like it we might not have asked for um for What's it called? The the bronze bracelet. I don't think people were out there waving flags that we demand full bronze bracelet. <laughs> However, I feel like uh, it hasn't been done at least on the luxury level, right? This might be the first one. I I I I, I believe some micro brand somewhere has probably done it, but a major brand. I don't think uh, Omega is making. Uh, full bronze bracelets or any other brand. I, I don't know any other brand that does it. I don't know either, but that doesn't say anything because I'm an outspoken opponent uh, to bronze. So okay, what do I know? No, no, no. I mean, no, it's fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, it, the bronze is not for everyone. And I actually have a theory. Now we need that. The music, you know, the, the my, my theory. <laughs> now tell me tell me tell me now here here's check this out so my theory and uh this came to me after our we had a, a fairly long discussion on perth luxuries channel and i was trying to understand why would they do this and my theory is this they release the glide lock right but this is an untested tech right this is the first glide lock that Tudor has released. Now, if they were to put this on the watch that people want to buy, right? The, there might be a chance that it's got some inherent flaws that Tudor hasn't able to spot within their lab in you know in their lab under lab condition. So my my theory is that they did it in full bronze as a way so that you know because they're not going to sell too many of these uh, and they're also limiting it by making it a boutique only edition. Now, by selling just a, f a handful, they'll they'll see 
what the the customers will tell them. Like what because you don't want to make a glide lock and then it breaks and people start losing their watches and you sold already a million of these, right? You mean just like the like the bracelets of the new ceramic GMTs um where the first uh examples of it fell apart because the welding was not good R exactly exactly you see uh, you don't want to put the brand new technology the brand new untested tech on a piece that that's going to go for for and think about this and i actually when uh think about this when uh tutor tutor already had this ma a major failure with their pep diet pepsis right they sold a gajillion of them and it started having those date wheel problems mm -hmm. right and then in order to uh kind of reconcile all the grievances they had to literally extend warranties that's why they're doing five-year warranties now on all their watches it was just to basically to save their name you know I don't think in a million years they would want to do a five-year warranty, uh, you know, just uh, out of sheer goodwill. I think they were in damage control because of that mistake. Mm. So I think uh, with, by doing this, by doing the glide like on the limited edition kind of piece, they can, you know, test test it in the real world conditions before uh, making it available for the mass market. Now, uh here, one second. Somebody said that um, uh, Logan Hall says Omega already has glide lock. Uh, right. I, I, I think Tudor hasn't. And but also also I think this type of glide lock, personally, personally, I prefer this type of glide lock because um, and I had this discussion with Perf earlier today because whereas the Omega, it's got that button trigger you know it's easier to to use the glide lock that omega has but it's much more girthier right so you're sacrificed so with this type of glide lock uh you actually they, you can see how compact it is it's actually smaller than the submariner glide lock which is ridiculous how it, this this is very impressive uh yes it's not it doesn't have the trigger it's fiddly but i think i personally i prefer fiddliness over uh, the compactness. I want it. I want it to be as small as possible. Now, what do you think? What do you think? Is this? Am I crazy? Am I just speculating? Am I just uh, talking nonsense? What do you think? Well, um, I think it it makes sense uh, to to try this out in a small limited edition. Um, do we have a better video um, uh, about how how that? Um, um, glide lock or gliding lock really works because it looks a little bit to me like uh, it has uh, this kind of knurling at the inside of the the clasp yes uh, which seems to be a little bit finer than on the the rolex submariner ah um, uh, yeah you see the, the way the angle the way they angled it it's very hard to see yeah. there's uh, no no better oh sensational seller sensational seller or caller seller caller pelagos already has the glide like for many years uh yeah true true that true that but uh, the the pelagos glide like is so complicated um that's a very good point um but i think it's very big it's it, it's it's very it's almost like Omega, Omega size. Uh, if uh, it's actually quite genius, the way the way it goes to the spring mode and everything. Pelagos got one of the the best, uh, actually, glide locks on the market. If it wasn't so girthy. Oh, and we got perf hey, luxury. Guys. Hello, sir. Hello, perf. Okay, he's still sorting stuff out. Okay, yeah, um, he's pour, trying. pour a glass of whiskey and then uh, and then we'll uh, we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, actually, that's a really good point. Um, let me actually let me see. Let's see it. Can we bring up a Pelagos here? Oh yeah. I just want I want to see how how that uh lot clasp compares. 
Okay. Actually, I'm doing the same same thing because I'm I'm not a Tudor fan, so I mm -hmm. I haven't really tried it out. You haven't tried the Pelagos uh, Glide Lock. Glide Lock, no. Oh yeah, no. I I tried it. I tried it. Uh, I actually, but I forgot how it works on the inside. I'm there are you see you see it does it has like all of these uh, micro adjustments. See if you once you but when when you put it into this last uh section yeah then it it goes into like this spring mode where it's uh it's adjusted by spring mm -hmm. so it's like it's an open it's an open adjustment that can kind of the bracelet will expand with with the width of your wrist so it's a spring expanding yeah so here Not if fixed. you if you set them in here uh then it's like in a, a fixed these are fixed positions mm -hmm. uh okay. the, mm -hmm. the these these are fixed and there's like a, this little dot that tells you in which position you are where you are yeah yeah but oh actually you know what i think once you put it here then it's in a spring position i i i i, I forget but there's a spring position once it's in a spring position then as you put it on you can feel that uh, you're like you're either fighting the spring or or not. It's very complicated, um, and as you can see, it is it is quite bulky. I don't know if they would be able to put it on all of their watches. But you look it at looks, something like it looks the, more their... more expensive to make. Yeah, with the spring and with everything. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of tech in there, yeah. but it is quite quite impressive. Uh, yeah. Huh. Titanium good, bracelet. Good, good, good Narvin, Jonathan. Good Narvin. But my uh, my verdict um, in my uh, pro probably not my best German. Nicht gut. Nicht, nicht gut. gut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Why that? Um, it'll be a barnacle magnet in a few years. The patina on it will be um, well interesting. You mean oh, okay. the tarnishing, or, or what? Or what yeah, are you talking the, about? The, the, the tarnishing. Well, that, that's uh, one of my main issues. But we are talking now about the adjustable. We'll, yeah, we'll talk. Glass. We'll talk about tarnishing. I want to talk about the tarnishing as well because I, I actually have a I have some thoughts on the tarnishing. Oh, does it have something to do with communism? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! No, uh, maybe, maybe. Okay. Uh, Green list. <laughs> but check this out. So, so sensational. To be color. honest, I'm, I'm really curious how you're gonna defend the tarnishing. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. So, so say, but okay. Like, <laughs> okay. Check this out. So, but the sensational caller uh, 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 tells tells us. So basically, this the spring position is only for wearing underwater. I mean. Technically, sure, sure, because it's cool because it's very uh, good for putting it over a diving suit, the spring, right? Because as the material gets wet, if you're wearing it, eh, etc., etc. But here's the thing: so there's for daily use, there's only three positions. So there's three positions, and the fourth position is the spring position. Okay. On the Pelagos. Okay, but I think like th that that glide that that clasp. Is very technical, whereas this clasp seems to be more kind of uh, more basic. For it's something like this is better. It's like they can put this kind of clasp in all of their watches. Yeah, you know, it's uh, that's why I think uh, like and and if you think about it, Omega doesn't have. Uh, adjustments on their brand new speedmaster like that's insane you know the yeah the the, the brand new speedmaster doesn't have this kind so, of tech so so did i understand correctly that omega is um is selling an adjustable or expandable uh, buckle for an extra charge for the speedmasters and the seamasters and everything. But for the old uh, speedmasters okay and no, because not, not entirely. The racing speedmaster. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. It's not all of them. And I think the way where that expanding uh, class came out of, it was uh, the Olympic, like uh, the speed, the, the speed masters, they came that there were Olympic editions that came, they, they came with, uh, with the micro adjustment class uh, by default. Okay. And uh, I think like now they have a, a, a some limited stock of those uh, class. But I feel like in this modern world that we're living in, all watches should have uh, uh, some kind of easy link technology by default. It just, I, it just. I totally agree, and that is my main beef with uh, Grand Seiko mm -hmm. uh, that they're not able to uh, uh, to do something like that. Um, because I'm constantly changing um, bracelet links on, on, on my watches yes. um, just because I'm losing weight or it's getting warmer or colder. And mm. it's, it's, it's really ridiculous. And if, if you see it, you, you know, these, these very old Rolex um, buckles, the tuna can um, material buckles, uh, they could be adjusted with a toothpick. And we, yes. we shouldn't we shouldn't go worse than that on any modern watch, in my opinion. Uh, Logan Hall says, uh, "Doesn't make sense to put glide lock on Speedmaster, though. Glide lock is meant for diving, not chronograph. We treat glide lock as a con uh, convenience and forget it's no. here. That's all mythological I, uh, BS. I, I, I mean, who's using like the, the, the chronograph? Are we still using Speedmasters to go to the moon?" It's like uh, I, I use them at the Grand Prix, Tim. A what? I use uh, Speedy at the Grand Prix. Okay, but how many people use their uh, Submariners for diving? Uh, Most well, people my use them for desk diving. Sea, I mean, my, well, my my uncle used his um, sea to a lot when he was a saturation diver, simply so he could write off sixteen grand off his tax bill. <laughs> 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 Look, I, I I don't think that every watch needs uh, a glide lock, but I think an easy link is yeah. uh, with a, a modern watch should not should should have an easy link, some kind of a micro adjustment. Five millimeters is all that you technically need. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the glide lock is kind of it's a little bit it can spoil you, but uh, easy link, I feel like it's mandatory. It just feels, totally yeah. It just feels like they're cheaping out by not putting uh, some kind of. And and uh, please allow me to to go back to the old Ro uh, Rolex um, bracelets. You had uh, that flip lock, which was meant for divers. Mm -hmm. uh, that flip lock is extension, uh, but on on basically all of the of of the Datejust and Submariners, you had that uh, adjustable uh, buckle. Uh, where you could you could easily uh, adjust everything with a toothpick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Oh, oh, you mean you mean like the old old. Uh... Yeah, my my car adjust. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, with that's this kind of thing that people forget. Like, uh, yeah. uh, where is the new one? Right, you don't need any tools. You can just do it yeah. with your finger. Yeah. Yep. But the old one, you could at least do it. But like, you look at the the new watches. There's a lot of new watches that there's no way you need a special like the watchmaker's tool, the yeah, spring yeah. bar tool. No, no, I was I was just replying to Logan yeah. Hall because yeah. because he said uh, that the modern uh, glide lock is is solely made for divers, and I'm taking uh, us back to the time where um, a submariner had an adjustable uh, uh, buckle. And in addition, a flip lock, uh, yeah. which was then made uh, uh, or meant to be worn over uh, a wetsuit. Mm -hmm. uh, sensational color. So many sports watches are getting ugly these days. I'm going to Cartier more and more. Chris, which watch check? Wearing my new Santos Medium. I Look, I agree. I mean, there's so much. That, that's why uh, I think this is why Tudor Black Bay has really taken off because of how simple it is that this line is so you you look at other tutor watches they're so ugly like their whole line everything that's not black bay is just 
ugly. Well, how, how's that any better than the um, uh, the ceramic, the black base ceramic, or the stealth bomber? Mm-hmm. Uh, how's it any better? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, it's it's got its own unique look, right? Um, people who are super into black, they will appreciate it. You know, there's people who just have everything has to be black, right? Mm. So what would you rather have? A PVD-coated uh, steel watch or would you rather have a ceramic watch? Well, if you're going for that... Good, but- all black Come theme. To think of it, I, I'd, ra- I'd rather give my money to JJ La Hedge Fund. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wasn't no, it I mean, JJSW? I mean, JJ S W? JJ S W. Raphael Butterbread. Hi guys. Very glad to tone Tim is back, baby. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad to be back in the saddle talking watches. Looking at these new releases. Um, so, so luxury, I, you're burning your pancakes. <laughs> oh! I like them dark. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Lucky I like them dark. <laughs> yeah, but, but if, if it reaches the color of your pan, it's too late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, look, and... They they released the new cla- the clasp right. Uh, I feel like now they can go back and re-release all of the all of their Black Bay line now with new clasp. Yep. Right. And Version for, and, two. And so, probably an aftermarket solution for an extra charge for the old ones. How oh, about that? Oh, like a like a thousand dollars. Well, five hundred or six hundred. I think it's all Tim. Interesting. Interesting. I don't think they would. I, I don't. I don't think they'll do it though. I think they'll. They'll do some minor changes. They'll make the new clasp. Like I would, if I was. Uh, if I, <laughs> I was right? waiting for this. Hey man, Thank if, God you're not running a company. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, look, if I was running a company, right, I would do like. Uh, I would double dip. I mean, I would give people a reason to buy a whole new watch, right? Uh, like, <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, look, two things would happen, right? If they were to, let's say, this, so like they they have a Black Bay Fifty Eight, this blue one, right? What I would do is, I would release the new one, the new Black Bay Blue, with the new uh, Glide Lock, right? I would change the shade of blue, okay? I would do some minor change, uh, I don't know, on the dial to say, so, so, that, so that people, oh, you know what I would do? Oh! I would do black dial with blue bezel. And I would put the new glide no. lock on it. And I would charge uh, like extra 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks. Yeah, no, no, no. No, no, no. I like what, what, why, not, why not red bezel or make it panda? No, no, no. Because because you don't want to release too many different colors. So you want to have so you want to have like this thing where a guy who has a blue one, fully blue one, that's the old version, and the one that has black dial, blue bezel, that's the new version. And you can easily identify uh, which one is new, which one is old. Hello. Mr. GMT. Who the hell is this imposter? <laughs> <laughs> that's uh <laughs> that's a that's a fan of yours. <laughs> Bob Loblo. Oh Loblo. <laughs> Since Tudor has pretty much made the black bay in every material, or maybe not, do you think we'll see a new black bay in 2020 for the tenth anniversary of the line? <sighs> Hopefully the black bay bites the bites the dust. Wow! It's like flogging a dead horse almost. Look, you know what? I think they might start doing ceramic bezels for the ten years anniversary. It could be yes. Mm-hmm. Coffee time. Yeah, because they they have the technology. They they, they already you know they re- released a fully ceramic uh, black bay with uh, ceramic case and ceramic bezel. So I think like for ten years. If it's next year, then I would be expecting two things. 
ceramic bezel with the glide lock. And that will be black bait version 2.0. Glidelock agreed, but um, a ceramic bezel wouldn't it, uh, wouldn't it come too close to the Submariner, which is not available anyhow? No, but I would do. Ma See, here's the difference: the the Rolex uh, ceramic uh, bezels, they're polished, but Tudor ceramic bezels would be brushed. Look but at this. Tim, ceramic I can bezel. go and get an Amiga. I can go and get an Amiga which has a cer ceramic bezel. If I want to take on Amiga, I have to play at Amiga's level at a minimum. I think. The what? Okay, so Tudor's last thing was clearly an affront to Omega. So, yes. I mean, how, how do they expect to take um, take on, um, how do Tudor expect to take on Omega if they aren't even going to have things like polished ceramic bezels? No, well, I, I think they're going for more like a utilitarian look. Because when, once you start polishing stuff, it starts to look more like a luxury watch rather than like a tool watch. And they think uh Tudor is trying to stay kind of looking like a like tool that's why they were using uh aluminum bezels and i think i feel like oh with this with the release of this ceramic like th this allows them to test the bezel how it's going to perform how is this ceramic going to perform and they have they have like a whole year now and they'll see what the feedback of the customers that will buy this it's like they're testing a bezel on on the ceramic and they're testing a glide lock on the bronze. And with the 10th anniversary, they'll put those two babies together and boom, you got the Black Bay 58 V2. Uh, I, I personally think if they don't bring out like a steel coat soon, um, I think people are just going to tune out for new releases. They're not going to release another steel, you mean? I, mean, I think if they don't release a steel coat soon, um, uh, I think... People are very quickly just going to go, oh, she didn't even realize, uh, meh, don't even yeah. bother. You will, you know what? I think they have to make a new movement for that uh, because the, yeah. the the Pepsi movement is not going to fit into the, the Black Bay 58. So I think I have a feeling that they are working on the new movement somewhere in the background. So they can't just make that as fast as we would like them to. Uh, Raphael Butterbread. Well, Omega is still fat, more expensive, while providing the exact same performance if you compare certain models like the new full ceramic. That is, this is why Omega should be, should ha have like a huge wake up call to, today in the morning when they see. Wrong. Because if Tudor can, can do a ceramic bezel, glide lock at half the price. That is going to destroy Omega. So, 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 sorry, Tim, but uh, to me, Omega is the same as German watches are to Jonathan. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will defend it till the end of the earth. Look, I, I think uh, Omega kind of fucked up a little bit by not releasing the new speedy with at least some kind of easy link. But, I, but there, may I respectfully um, um, comment? that my German watches are really good watches while Omega are not. <laughs> the dangerous territory approach. <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Sydney Marquis Jr. Dude, the Pelagos had a ceramic bezel since the start of 2012. Yep. Oh, yeah. that's true. And, and it lost the luminous uh, uh, um, um, sections uh, in yeah. in large numbers. So that didn't go well. Yeah, it's also, but well, also the the. Well, this is this is ceramic, right? Yeah. Um, it just kind of it doesn't look ceramic, I guess. Um, well, you know. I think it it uh, it also doesn't fit to the vintage look. Of the Black Bay, it it works here on a on a, a pretty modern take like the Pelagos, yeah. um, but uh, the Black Bay is a is a is a uh, reference or a homage uh, if you if you want to put it like that uh, to the vintage Rolex watches. So I mean, it's in just in, just in general, Pelagos has so many flaws. It's just. Um, mm, 
I mean, it's a great watch. It's an amazing watch. I was I was recommending this watch to to a friend of mine before, but, but then we, we figured, you know what? Let's just go for the for the Rolex. Forget 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 about all of this Tudor nonsense. If <laughs> because he can afford a Rolex, so like why even why waste time here? Uh, but I, you know, it's an okay piece. Well, the, uh, just, to me, the Pelagos is better than uh, the Bronzo. Just too big, I think. That's that's the problem with it, and it's and it's a uh, freaking. Might, might be too big, but better than Bronzo. No, but, but yeah. It's also titanium. Titanium. It's not. It's very well, tool watch. It's tool watch, definitely. Well, Tim, Tim. Anyway, getting back to Clyde Locks, I think, and I hate to admit this, as yes. an Amiga fanboy, yes. I'll say the best Glide Lock in the world is on. The James Cameron, because that's one where you don't, it's the only one where you don't have to undo the clasp in any way, shape or form mm -hmm. to actually adjust it because it pops out in the middle of the top of the clasp. Yes. Only the James Cameron has that. And I'm, I hate to admit it as an Amiga fanboy, but yeah. that is it, that is the only real proper um, true on the fly adjustment. I mean, yeah, what we've got on Omegas and Rolexes, that's nice, but it's not... Yeah. I think in the purest of forms, on the fly adjustment. It's not only the James Cameron; it's it's also the the normal uh, seat dweller, uh, yeah. isn't it? Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean I it, 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 that 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 the 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 lock on the seat dwellers, uh, deep sea, deep sea, deep sea, yeah, is just freaking ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, I think it's a little bit too advanced because it's it, it's an expense. There's a reason why Deep Sea sells for like thirteen, fourteen thousand retail, whereas the Submariner sells for uh, you know nine retail. So you are paying more for that for that technology. Well, you, you've you've got three hundred meters versus thirty nine hundred, or what is it, four thousand? Mm. I just feel like uh, <laughs> some kind of a minor. Minor adjustment should be uh, a mandatory on every single luxury watch. There is just no excuse not to have some type of on-the-fly adjustment in every single watch nowadays. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Raphael, uh, they uh, they have uh, the same movement certification now with the previous uh, that only Omega had. That's what, that was that's what one killed watch. Omega. Always uh, was well, big selling well, Omega. I mean, look, I, I think going forward next year, what you will see is uh, Tudor will start putting uh, the the movement that they have in the in the black base ceramic into all of their regular black base, right? And the black base fifty eight, they will get the Easy Link. Uh, so, oh. It's gonna be rough. That's going to be really rough. Uh, ACTC, this bronze tutor blows Omega Seamaster 300 bronze gold. Oh yeah, out of the water. Both of these watches oh, even dear. look similar in color tone. Have a look to them. Yeah, let's uh, let's just put them side by side. For me, to to say to say that that Tudor is winning or getting close at the moment, it, it's it's like it's like saying Johnny Walker um, is on the verge of outperforming McCallum Edition mm -hmm. Six from nineteen sixty. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I think uh, what, what we're looking here at his. Uh, Ooh. Oh, if, if you want to see, if you want to see ridiculous, like indulgence and expensive from Omega Tim, so yeah. Omega brought out a that it was that model, but in like a blue. Bruce Williams had it on his channel. It was made out of the same sort of stuff that apparently Egyptian pharaohs were buried with. Price mm. was like thirty four thousand US. Mm. Damn. I mean, sometimes Amiga do shoot themselves in the foot with stupid watches like that. But 
if you remember that model when they brought it out in the Spectre Seamaster, yeah. that because and then they made it limited. That now trades about two or three grand over retail in the US. That's when one comes up. That was last time, and that was that was a couple of months ago. Now I reckon it would be four or five grand over over retail. Damn. So sorry to say it, Cheetah, but I think you've got a little bit of a way to go. Well, look, I mean, these watches, they're completely different price points, right? Uh, yes, that's what I want to The Tudor is uh, a $4,000 watch, and this is a $12,000. We, we're comparing a watch that's three times more expensive, right? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense because I could go and get an SMP. Well, look, it, I mean, it does. It does. I mean, this should be very scary for, for Omega because this is not that much of a difference i mean people say uh, uh raj g says no comparison it's a different league i mean the the price is also different league right i mean the, the, it's not a twice as more expensive three times more expensive is there three times difference here i i don't i mean it's got gold in it and there's no bronze strap but still It's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Uh, what what I I find uh, more interesting is that there apparently is a market for these bronze uh, cases. Yeah. And um, because the the Black Bay bronze is is out now for for quite some time, and I'm pretty sure they wouldn't uh, issue another one with a bronze bracelet if it if it wouldn't sell. I mean. I think the whole purpose here is to not sell too many of these. Um, and it's a boutique only, right? So people have to go through the trouble of uh, finding boutiques and chasing these watches down. So this is like only the most hardcore fans will uh, will will be looking for these watches, right? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I personally don't even know of any what you do a Tudor boutique. I don't know of any in Australia because all of them seem to be bundled with Rolex ADs. And my fear is that would be that would be deemed a Tudor AD, not a Tudor boutique, where like it only sells Tudor. What happened to and, your audio? Sorry. What yeah, happened to your audio? It really got really shitty. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll mute and I'll fix it. Boo hoo. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, and that's the question. Like, what is a boutique? Where where does one find a Tudor boutique? Is does Tudor have enough uh, you know sway in the you know does the brand matter enough to have to deserve a boutique? I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty crazy, and actually, you look at it in this nat in more natural light, and it doesn't. Uh, it does look different. Uh, look at that. Oh, look. Um, there's this is purely for hipsters. Hipsters love these bronze watches, right? The, there's also people who have like you know the EDC people, EDC people. There's like these EDC people that that want to have everything bronze, right? They have a theme, theme, everything either black. Oh, you can see a, a piece of glide lock over there. Uh oh, I think we got a sneak, sneak preview. Yeah, of yeah what there, it, there's a kind of ratchet. Uh, uh, yes, you can see here. Look at that. Oh, see that? Yeah, you can see the grooves. The yep. grooves. Yeah, and uh, in the glide lock, and this is you can see there's a spring here yeah which uh, presses probably that part down on on the on the grooves mm -hmm. and you can see there's screws very interesting screws you can and see it. Uh, yeah very and you can see a double spring bar yes i guess for stability uh because this th these double spring bars they they're gliding inside this groove you can see there's a groove right there mm -hmm. you see that yeah, there's or, a groove drilled into the side of, of the case. 
Don't you think there is a kind of sled moving around? No, no. It's like these spring bars yeah. are the inside room. this groove, mm -hmm. and they're kind of they're just kind of moving along. And I guess when you when you press this down, there is some kind of a lever that 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 latches into. Yeah. But move it, the video a little bit further because um, you could you could see from from the now right side uh, that there is a pattern inside of the um, the uh, the clutch. Look here. Can you oh, see? No, no, something? that's this is where the, the oh, you, see, you see this line. You see this line. Yeah. Yeah. This is what latches inside the groove. You can see it's even the same uh, uh, width. Yeah, so when continue when... a little bit further because it, it looks like a, a kind of um of fine pattern and, and not that heavy groove now i, I think it's uh, further up on the video now you see it, that groove it latches inside inside uh inside the on the on the upper it's hard to explain the things yeah but you can see when it's lifted yeah. Now, uh, this double spring bar uh, part is free to move around, uh, and I think like you can move it. This is far is as far as you can move it, and then when you Continue drop with the video, because um... no, no, but then it cuts. See, it cuts. That's the last okay. frame. I'm going okay. frame by frame. So when at this point, when you drop it, this uh, line will hook into. Uh, the grooves that are that are drilled into uh, i guess the this lower portion okay yeah so i mean this is pretty pretty f like it's designed to be f kind of fail proof um uh, you can see uh, that's this is the spring and then this is where uh, a piece of the spring right is uh uh kind of they drilled this this part to rest one side of the spring. Very interesting. Very interesting. Wow. Mm. But they did keep the same kind of this thin part here. So there are. Uh, I, I I was actually I'm not a big fan of this smaller. See on Rolex, uh, this side is full width. Oh no, actually it's not full width. Oh. Okay. So on on the Rolex. It's the same here, but this lever that allows you to lift uh, the to open the watch yeah. is full width. Okay, so but here it's only this tiny, tiny little one. I need to go downstairs now to grab my submariner and and see what you're talking about. But <laughs> I believe that that you're right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's see. Uh, the, the uh, Aussie expat, there is a Tudor boutique in Dubai, uh, BBB Black Bay boutique, and Aussie expat says this is a mini glide lock. Yeah, it is a kind of a mini glide lock because it's got the same uh expansion uh as the glide lock, but in a much more compact uh yeah. size. All right, so I it think may be we've... difficult to, to wear over a wetsuit like that because uh, the the adjustability is um, is quite limited. So it's basically more a comfort thing than a functional tool yeah, let's diver. Be, thing. Let's be real. Nobody's going to be wearing these over dive suits. <laughs> uh, Agreed. Particularly no. in bronze. Yeah. <laughs> which which brings us back to the tarnishing. Yeah. <laughs> Now, exactly. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about the tarnishing. And you know what? Okay, now I'm sitting back and just waiting for your argument to unfold. Look, I think <laughs> I think that tarnishing, when you think about tarnishing, it is a it is a question of your of the wristwatch philosophy. Right? I think we have been uh, these the all of these watch brands they have been on a mission to create a watch that doesn't age, that doesn't change, that that preserves its look forever, right? Uh, like that's this is the reason why people don't want the scratches. Yeah. I mean, that's the there's a whole 
almost people everybody wants to watch to be in minty 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 people don't want a single scratch to be on their watch there's so everybody kind of a lot of people value uh the pristineness and the look of their watch uh when it's scratched and dinked and yeah people fucked. really hate yes <laughs> right like people hate but if you think about it these are just they're just arbitrary. Like it is arbitrarily to value uh, the mintiness of the watch. You know what I mean? Like who can like, like who like I can say well, who cares, right? And well, we know who cares, right? The people who sell us the watch. Uh, there's this whole culture that right? a, a minty, minty, minty Panda Daytona will sell for forty thousand now, and a, a, a slightly beat up one will cost 35 right so you can save like this just this, this whole culture has been created around how pristine the condition of the watch is and i think that it's actually a wrong way to look at it actually this tutor the bronze it's a reject in in the way it's a rejection of that type of philosophy because you if you even if you keep this watch in the in the box it will tarnish it will change right it's it's anti flipper anti the society that has been created right where we okay. value I did we hear, hear enough of that bullshit now? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think that we are going for a flip. I mean, I know, I know, uh, uh, Jonathan, that you have been on a hunt for a really minty, minty, minty Pepsi. Yep. But have you ever have you asked yourself why does it matter? That the Pepsi you get is as minty as possible. Actually, that, that is that is a good thing, and I apologize. I'm not very good at multitasking tasking yeah. because uh, I went uh, through the the same uh, stage. Mm -hmm. uh, it's too bad that I don't have my iPad with me mm -hmm. because I was going to the working room because my wife is downstairs. Hey, we can we can have a whole conversation on uh, on this topic the whole show on this topic yeah. because uh i mean this 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 whole thing just came up because i was thinking about tutor and about the inevitability of it tarnishing and the inevit yeah. inevit inevitability of it being scratched up beat up and i was even thinking like look there's a uh they have an aluminum bezel on it which goes with the theme of this watch eventually reflecting it's user. Yeah, and so I I get your point where, where you say oh, it's um it's it's part of your life and uh, part of your story and part mm. of your connection with the watch and yes. yada, yada yada. Very yada. romantic. I I understand this totally, but now now this is the po most important question why does does the the watch then necessarily turn green why why can't we limit ourselves to to scratches and things and, and stuff like that why why does it have to change color to the most ugly tone uh, which is which is uh, possibly imaginable <laughs> yes that, that is my problem i understand the concept the most in, uh, expensive pairs of of jeans are the ones with the holes uh, which are artificially done and so on and so i i, yeah. I really get that um i'm i'm not sure if um if I the, the jeans with holes <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, but uh, um, I'm not sure if if that uh, that goes too far with the bronze, uh, so that that the material basically rots on on your wrist, and um, that this should. Well, I think should be if you appearance. actually wear it, it will not rot because you will continually uh, rub it against the like. Uh, yeah, your shirt. yeah, the rot is on your clothing. Yes. Well, I look. I think <laughs> if you if you, for example, I think what happens, it will oxidize. Uh, well, there is bronze. There are different kinds of bronze. Okay, I don't think this bronze my, my, will my ever. Him, 
Yeah. My concern so... is the co- is copper poisoning over over a long period of time. Well, I shouldn't say poisoning, but I mean uh, copper getting in your bloodstream potentially, because of course copper is one of the um, things that goes into bronze from um, an atomic perspective. Well, somewhere I have a bronze. Is it bronze or is it copper? I think. Um, so, uh, uh, I and then look, look, at, look at snacks. Coco says clothes will stain. Sure I mean, something? if I if I if I'm wearing one of my four hundred and fifty dollar bespoke shirts, mm-hmm. um, trust me, if if I see any sort of stain on that, I'm gonna absolutely melt down. How, how about <laughs> if if the cuff is getting rubbed? Would you would you enjoy that just? Uh, because it's part of, of the story of you wearing the uh, the shirt, or would it wouldn't it be terribly annoying to you? No, it, it would be annoying because these <laughs> shirts they're made they're made by huntsmen, and mm-hmm. it was part of the it was one of the Kingsman tailors. Mm-hmm. So, and the fact that I can't just go to London at the moment because I'm stuck in HMP Fortress Australia. <laughs> Yeah, Tim, we're, we're, we're locked up. We're, we live in a communist country. No, oh, I, you're, you're, actually, actually, you're, you're living in the capitalist country that's locked up. Well, well Tim, well, Tim I'd, I'd be able to leave then. Well, <laughs> but you are in the capitalist country and you can't leave. Correct. Can't yeah. be capitalist then. Yeah, so, but you say you're living in the communist country and you can't leave. Yeah. You don't have to live like you're you're disproving your own point. Like you don't have to live in the communist country to not be able to leave because you are living you are living in the capitalist country and you can't leave. It means it, it means that it doesn't even matter which country you live in. It the, the, the government doesn't matter. Uh the fact that you can't leave uh is not an inherent uh like uh an inherent uh Didn't- didn't we want to, to limit that kind of talk to the <laughs> second hour or the third? I, it's I, not, I, 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 I won't, I won't mention that... certain countries just for sensitivities and respect, but Jonathan, I think you know I think you know what I'm saying without me saying it in terms of certain countries in the past. Uh, I won't say it just out of respect to yourself, but... I mean, look, uh, look, I mean, I, I'm just saying that it's not a country. Uh, it's not not. Uh, Can we it's go? It's not. Back to the it's not a rule of communist countries that you can't leave them, right? Any country can have a rule that you can't leave them. It does. It's not necessarily a communist. That that's not what makes a communist country. Communist country means that the government owns means of production. That that's that's my point basically. Uh, but. Uh, uh, Okay, let's. So uh, I wanted to show you guys something. So I have one of these flasks. I don't know where it is right now, but it's a copper flask. Although they do have a, I think some kind of treatment on the inside. I think they they need a zinc coating on on copper items uh, oh, in order not correct. to poison you. Yes, yes, yes. There is right. because it, it is silver on the inside. As you can see here, see he's working with it, yeah. and you can see, and it's made in the United States. That's a really cool thing about this brand, Jacob Bromwell. It's a made in the United States. They've been making these flasks forever, for like two hundred years since, since the days of slavery, literally. Um, and what's interesting is that um, uh, they tarnish. I, they do tarnish, and I have one. I just don't know where it is. I'll try to find it for the next show. But what's what's funny is that in their old uh, like image of the flask, the guy was wearing a Tudor, <laughs> and I thought that was quite interesting. It wasn't the bronze Tudor, but it was just a regular Tudor. It was like on the, and they do actually have some of them like super rotten. Look at this. See, like this is all kinds of patinas, and this is like artificial patina uh, that the bronze, that this copper can acquire, depending yeah, on which. They are selling seventy-five percent off. So, what does it tell you? I mean, it's all marketing. That's what it tells me. It's marketing. <laughs> but they're always getting getting back to these flasks. More importantly, yeah. what do you have to go in it? Because because last time last time I heard, um, it's a bit dry. <laughs> What? Last time I heard your um your in terms of what you could put in it was a bit dry. <laughs> oh, oh, because yeah, you know. 
ever, ever, sadly, a lot of things are going over retail. And I mean, I mean, Springbank, Springbank's an exception. It always does that. Um, but I mean, mm -hmm. if I, if if you if you were only able to buy like Telesca Storm at, over retail at duty free, that's ridiculous. Retailers should be begging for sales at the moment. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it's bad. I mean. Given that you guys have now had your, your tariffs dropped, you should see a, re a reduction in prices, certainly. I mean, I, I'm just waiting to see what the free trade agreement do does for us. Um, because yeah, the 20 I think, I think it's just called free pay. trade agreement, and I don't think it, it will actually be free trade. <laughs> they just call things, you know, uh, whatever they want. I mean, the name doesn't necessarily need to represent what's inside it, right? It's like... Uh, well, uh, one 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 thing one thing I will I will give Jonathan credit for, he does ha he is a member of the country with the easily the smartest prime minister or chancellor I believe it is. I hope that's not offensive. Yeah. No, no, it's it's uh, it's right. Uh, it's Tim, right. Do, you, do you know what um, do you know what um, Ms Merkel has a degree in? Uh, in, uh, I think um, she uh, she has a degree in chemistry, as far as I know. She's a nuclear physicist. Uh, nu uh, yeah. 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 God yeah. damn. Not bad for a world leader, hey, Tim? Yeah, it's pretty hardcore. But, I mean, uh, the, I, I don't think it's one necessarily needs to be uh, very smart in nuclear f physics to run a country, although maybe that kind of... Uh, Kind of problem solving that's involved in you know in I don't know nuclear physics could be helpful in running the country although I don't think it's necessarily uh, necessary but well, uh, hey uh, Germany seems to be doing really well is it doing well we are doing quite okay compared to uh, to other countries that, that mm -hmm. is true what what's what's with all these sort of um, disgruntled anti COVID rules or anti-covid vax people jonathan I, I keep seeing things on the news here i don't i don't know what's true and what's not i think i think th those are everywhere They're, those are not limited to germany uh, only mm -hmm. yeah i mean so there's so always you know, you know, um, you know these campaigns that, that go through social media, um, saying the vaccination um, is evil, and uh, Bill Gates pl uh, implants uh, chips uh, while you're getting vaccinated, and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> so, so this is uh, this yeah. is written everywhere, and um, so so everybody will read it, and some people will re believe it. People and who are susceptible to believing it, right? There's yeah. everywhere. Tim, I've just uh, been shooting you an image. Um, I'm not sure if you're able to pull this up. Uh, let's see. So, uh, 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 let me let me finish my thoughts on yeah. the tarnishing. Ah, uh, okay. No, but this this has something to do with tarnishing. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because it, it does look good. The watch does look good. Okay, so uh, so my my thing is that. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a flipper, and I think since the beginning I have mentioned that I do want to get my I can't wait to get my Explorer One scratched up on the hikes, uh, so that it kind of uh, will reflect flip. my personality. I did get, I did get a nasty gouge in my uh, Panda. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I was putting on a backpack and my camera wow. kind of scratched it. Ah, uh, whatever. I don't. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not gonna sell it. So, who cares? Uh, but I think these the the tutor will definitely accelerate. Uh, what how is that? Now that looks like it's Alange and Zan Alange yeah. one. Exactly. Uh, so I, I'll I'll tell you what um, why this uh, picture is extremely important important to me. Mm -hmm. So um, one and a half years ago, I bought my Lange one, mm -hmm. and I was babying that watch uh, to the heck, mm. and um, I was uh, totally upset when I when I, when it received the first scratches. Then I came up with that picture, and this is the CEO of Coca Cola. Oh, mm -hmm. and he's wearing a, a lange one. 
mm -hmm. which is obviously a couple of years old. Yes, he's wearing it uh, with a with that additional uh, bracelet, That's which big. obviously bangs on the watch, scratches <laughs> the watch to yes. hell. Yes, but the watch looks amazing, doesn't it? Yes, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Actually, it does look the 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 color of gold looks like it has some patina on it. Doesn't look brand new. Yeah, it, mm. it looks much better than than a new watch. Yes, and that gives me comfort to wear my watch not not with this kind of bracelet but not to worry about uh, getting the, the the watch beaten up or scratched or dinged or whatever uh, because I'm, uh, i see i see it from this uh, watch that they they still can look gorgeous and absolutely yeah. fantastic yes and i'll tell you what um, uh, in february 2020 I was flying to uh, to New York and back to London, and on the plane to back to London, I met uh, my my seat neighbor was an older guy. He he's an attorney from Connecticut. He must be quite rich, a Porsche guy, and he told me. Then we started uh, talking watches, and he has uh, he has a normal uh, Rolex, and he told me that he has a president in his safe, a day date. Mm. And he's keeping that watch for better times or for, uh, for special occasions. Okay. And he was 84. Ooh. <laughs> and I showed him that picture and no, I told should. him exactly what, what I told you guys. When you're 84, and, every day is special occasion. And I told him, what are you waiting for? Yeah. Wear this damn thing. Yeah. Now well, you know, you know what I, you no, know what I expected this, this guy to wear? A Coke. <laughs> <laughs> so, That'd so, be very fitting. But, but let me finish the story. Yes. So we we had that conversation at the uh, at the first two hours of that flight. Mm. What, uh, then uh, everybody went to sleep, and when the uh, the plane approached London, uh, we were both awake. And mm. then he came to me and said. Uh, look, uh, I I gave it a thought what what you told me about wearing my day date, mm. and from now on I'll wear it. And mm. I would like to thank you for for having changed my my mind and uh, for having changed my opinion about this particular watch. And he he shook my hand and oh I was wow, yeah. What was he wait? What was he wearing on the flight? Um, actually, he was wearing just an Apple Watch. Ah. <clears throat> wow! Yeah, and he um, actually he uh, he flew to London because his wife was already there. One of his uh, sons uh, received a newborn baby, um, and uh, so he went uh, to see the baby for the first time. That was the reason why he went there. I get it. I get it. Yeah, man. Look, uh, and, and so so that's exactly my point. If you have this watch, and I think, I think, why actually, I, I actually, why do I really like this new tutor? Because it, it actually, it made me think about the perspective about how, uh, about our kind of, what is the human relationship to these pieces, right? Uh, are we just holding on to them? And do, do we want watchmakers? to make watches that will not scratch that will not take uh that will not like patina they will not take on the, any kind of character they will always look minty 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 is that the end goal do we want that do we want watches that have these materials like the sapphire glass that doesn't scratch the sapphire bezel the, everything everything uh that that doesn't cannot yeah, unscratchable, untarnishable, completely uh, something that can't uh, cannot take on any type of character of its wearer. Do would, would would we want that? Is that the end goal? What do you guys think? I mean, would you, would you want a Rolex watch that you know that that doesn't scratch at all? Yes, and I'll tell you why, Tim. Because what is the motto that Patek believes in? 
where, with regards to selling and owning watches. You, but, you aren't owning it. You are just minding it to hand down yeah. to the next person. Yeah. So I would like that philosophy to continue with, say, Rolex or but, Omega. But when you think of, like, let's say... Something that's uh, going to last forever. Let's say you pass on... But, but the, here's the thing. Let's say two people uh, have two watches, right? How how can we dif differentiate between let's say you and me bought the same watch, right? Uh, the, our two watches are identical, right? And then we go mm -hmm. through life, we go through twenty five years of life, right? And at the end of the twenty five years, when you pass your watch on, let's say to your son, etc., I give my watch to, let's say I have a, a daughter in the future, something, right? I give mine, and they both look minty, minty, minty. Right, it's not like I'm not giving in the in the way. It's almost like I'm not even giving my watch. There's nothing that makes my watch my watch and your watch that makes it your watch. If they're completely unchanged, they cannot be scratched. Anything, it's just like just any old watch. Why not just even like just buy a new one or whatever? It's if it cannot if it cannot take on any type of characteristic, then I think it's almost like. It loses all its meaning. Like you're, you're not, you're not even holding on for anything for 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 the next generation. It's just, I don't know. Uh, I can I can see the the appeal um, that you're not only handing the watch down to the next generation, but um, show that this particular item lived a life together with you. I'm not sure if if the next generation will appreciate those traces. Mm. So, so, so that, yeah, I mean, that look, is my point. Look, 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 what's hap look what's happening with um, the the Chinese mainland. I want to make sure that I'm saying the Chinese mainland and not all of China. I <laughs> won't say anything more on that. But um, look look what's happening with the westernization of a lot of the middle or upper middle class of mainland China at the moment. I mean, do you think they would be buying um, a minty? What would? What do you think they'd rather have, Tim? A minty Rolex, well, poly, like ceramic, but polished to like shiny to the heavens. Hasn't been polished. Has been really looked after, or something that has um, uh, a life history to it, i.e., dings and scratches. I I, I think that it's a, it's a bad way to look at the, this question. Uh, let's let's just let's just rephrase it. Would you? If you were to, uh, let's say, if your dad gave you a watch, would you take it and polish it out? Depends on how bad it is. If if there are any sort of life experiences on it. Well, let's say he he told you like, oh, this is where I oh, this is this is I got this scratch when I was in World War Two, and this scratch I got when uh, when I was uh, when Mama doing hit this me thing. with a super slap. Would you? Yeah, would you then go and be like, fuck all these scratches, let's buff this this sucker out? Like, who cares? You got oh yeah, you got that in that war. Well, whatever. Would you would you erase all of that? Because like look, I'll tell you this. I I I, I have a like a ding in my explorer too that I got in fr in France. Oh and I remember that. Yeah. So I, I remember all of these events. Uh and uh, like if I were to tell you like Oh, like this is when I was in France. I got this scratch, and so as I go through the life, you know, if I can remember some of these things. Oh, and Paul yeah. Celestius, five dollars super chat. Have you <laughs> ever seen Tudor Boutique? Am I missing something? Bronze Age is long gone. <laughs> oh, spicy, spicy, Paul. Yeah, Bronze Age. That was a disaster. But yeah, what do you think? Would you would you buff out your dad's watch if it if he told you like about all of these events that happened to him and where he Tim. got the ding scratches and said, would Tim. you change the bezel? Would Tim. you change the bracelet? Tim, let's be honest. Most of the Rolex watches or even Patek Philippe watches that are handed down to the next generation, younger people, 18, 20, 25, 30. Mm -hmm. They are getting sold. They're they're just turning them 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 round for a quick buck, in my opinion. Because they have no appreciation for yeah. horological art. <laughs> so so that's a reality. Mm. So uh, it's an it's a nice thought. I I kind of understand the thought from your 
side yes. and from from your perspective and from from the one who is initially buying the Patek with the aim to hand it down to the next generation. Um, but uh, that is a fantasy, uh, in my opinion, in 95% of, of, of the cases. Well, no, I mean, I think it's 99.9% yeah. of the Same cases with, where with everybody wants everything to be... Well, yeah. now, well, if you think about it back then, right, everybody wanted to everything to be replaced uh, new. That's why... There's, there's so few watches that have original parts, right? Yeah. It's a new kind of obsession with... But the thing about this this obsession, I don't think it's that healthy. Like, what people are just, just wearing their watches so carefully, babying them, uh, you know, like... <gasps> God forget, forbid I, can, I, I will get a scratch on this uh, uh, luxury piece, right? Like, it's not healthy. I I don't I don't know how I would be able to live with myself if, if I had to be so careful with my watch as not to get a single scratch on it. That's not a life. I'm, <laughs> I don't think I'm I can more, live like that. I'm I'm not uh, so paranoid uh, about scratches anymore. What I'm paranoid right. uh, is but, that but, that, part, that people constantly polish their watches and Jonathan, and you them, are uh, like you are one of uh, one out of a million. Like yes, but most we're reaching people here are completely audience. obsessed. We're reaching here an audience of one point right. five million people. So my mission to them is: don't polish your watches. Actually, let me start a new poll. Watch. Let me actually do a poll here. So let, let me let, didn't answer the poll in the chat. Please uh, answer it in, yeah. uh, in the well, next well, one minute because I will take it down. I want I want a new poll. I want to ask people. I can't, I can't wait to hear the about. results on this one, Tim. So, uh, by the way, check this out. the The results actually flipped significantly. Uh, when uh, when I first launched the poll, what do you think about the new Bronzo? Uh, it was a disaster. Was like at forty percent, and now it's a winner. Uh, Thirty-two percent people think that the new Black Bay Fifty Eight Bronze is a winner. Twenty-two percent of the people are not impressed. Uh, twenty three people, twenty three percent people say, "Who is this for?" And twenty three percent think it's a disaster. Perfect. So I mean, it, it's still it's a seventy percent of people that think it's a bad idea, and thirty percent of people who think it's a it's a good good idea. Perfect. So I, 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 the main I reason not, I think it's I think it's now time that we take our hats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because the opinion has flipped. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I cannot do a second poll. That's interesting. I, I'm limited to only one poll per Ooh. live stream. Communist okay. YouTube. Oh wait, no, no, I can do it. <gasps> Did you see that? The results have wait. been have been tallied. Look at this. Uh, the results just came out. Now, let's do one more. Uh, do you, uh, baby? your watch yes no uh, okay let's just do yes no just to keep it simple uh, i have a confession to make so with yeah. with the amigas that you now buy you get a um you get a like a i don't know some sort of velvet pouch or something and you get some sort of card that you can put between the case back and the underside of the clasp Hmm. Um, like every, every time I'm at the gym, um, when I get on a treadmill, um, the watch goes in the pouch with the card in between the case back and the bottom of the class. So I fess up, plead guilty to one count of babying watches. Ooh. You know, I, I think like, uh, putting your watch in a watch pouch, it, I, I wouldn't consider it as babying the watch. Uh, you know, like when you're not using, I have one of those Rolex pouches somewhere. I don't know. Oh, it's in my in my camera bag. Well, that's, I that's, think that's, that's just another like, reason why Omega is better. You don't have to send it into a send it in for a service to get a pouch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay, guys, make sure that you answer the poll in the in the chat. Uh, whether you baby your watch or you don't. Oh, sorry, I'll have to get on to you. 
YouTube rather than StreamYard. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Otherwise, I won't see it. Make make sure you're not screwing up the the audio while doing that. <laughs> Very cool. Mm. Look, I think uh, there has been a perpetrator. I mean, look, it is an expensive thing. Obviously, you should care for it, but I don't think that just some people just go way too crazy uh in you know taking care of their watch uh just like their lives kind of revolve around this piece it changes mm, their I, habits like completely yeah I, I don't think keeping keeping what like watches in a safety deposit box for an extended period of time i don't count that as babying it i mean i count that as just having good security and good common sense I mean, yeah, if you got multiple watches, of course. There's no way you can you know wear every single piece every time and then if you if you're if you do have a safe and some kind of security that's that only makes sense. Um when I went to Spain, right, I did not um I did not put my watches in the safe. I mean, I did. I, I didn't keep them at Good. home either. Right? I took them to my parents' house and I left them at their at their at their place. <laughs> yeah, don't, 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 don't ever use hotel, hotel space. It's, uh, it's called the old the the old maid scam because the usually the roommates they will usually either have an override code or an override key. So mm -hmm. th those things are about as safe as well a kid's piggy bank versus someone with a hammer. Raphael Butterbread, polishing your watch is opposite of babying it to me. You don't get plastic surgery for your kids <laughs> when they turn out ugly. <laughs> Even if they're <laughs> too <harsh. laughs> Ouch. Spicy. Uh, and TH1138C, I'm not letting my gold watches get scratched up. It's not a safe queen. I wear it, but it's not waterproof, so... Same protection, forethought is necessary. I mean, with gold, what, what, you have what, to be a lot more careful. What gold right? watch? Sorry, THX. Yeah, that's that. Obviously, yeah. uh, obviously, one is, uh, that is not water resistant or waterproof. Yeah, yeah I mean, look, uh, it's one thing uh, if we're talking about like steel sports watch, and uh, obviously, yeah, he's talking about Paddock three seven nine six. Look. I, I do think you, there, but there is a limitation. There's just, you can be, there's just so much that you can do. But uh, I think definitely you have to be more careful with uh, the less waterproof the watch is. I'm not even buying anything that's not waterproof. Uh, forget yeah, about but, that. Um... I can't. But if, we, if we're going back to the picture of the uh, Coke CEO, I'm pretty sure this uh, 36, uh, 3796 yeah. will, would look uh, uh, fantastic to a similar degree like that Lange One is looking, even if he scratched it up uh, with this kind of bracelet. Yeah, no, I think, look, it will impart uh, also some character on it. Yeah. Um, I, I, think, I think, though, I don't think he plays like tennis. In it, Shouldn't right? do that, no. Right, so that that's where I say, like, uh, so there's certain things that you can do with a gold piece that, you, you know, when you're doing some activities that are not designed for that watch, you shouldn't wear it. Like, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear a, if I had, a, let's say, a, a Lange one, I wouldn't be wearing it to the gym or, right. Whereas I do wear the sub and and the Explorer, right. So. I think there is a time and place for all these. Why is why it's nice to have a few if you can afford a few? T tell me, Tim, you wouldn't wear a like one of Ooh. your really nice pieces, like a panda, on a treadmill Super when jet. you're going Super at a speed jet. above six k's an hour. Holy, holy smokes! B one hundred smackaroonies. <sighs> Wow, found out found out nothing is on my wish list at the AD months after I asked for some pieces to be added. 
Decent purchase what? history. Two tone, diamond, silver. Never asked for anything special starting out. Been friendly yeah. and left good reviews. Do I talk to the manager or just go gray? Talk to the manager for a start. Make them yeah. aware of the yeah. situation. Give them the chance to correct it because that way, if you then did post an updated review, you've given them the right of reply, so to speak. Not only that, not only that, you have to say that you made purchases here. Uh, otherwise, mm. they, they might. So if you talk to some yeah. sales representative that doesn't know that you had a uh, purchase history, uh, then uh, you, you know they will not be able to honor your purchase history. So for example, I'll, I'll tell you the story of my Explorer 2. When I got the Explorer 2, I came in to buy it. And I said, oh, uh, I'm looking for an Explorer 2. And they said, sorry, we don't have anything in stock. It wasn't until I said, like, hey, guys, I, I purchased here before. And I showed them my watch. So you should be wearing the piece that you bought from Correct. them. When Correct. you go to the market, and you, you have it to them and you have to say, uh, look, I, I purchased this watch here. Uh, you know, you can check it in your history. Uh, I Correct. and you have to you have to have a list of like watches that you want uh, to buy. Uh, obviously, when you should Correct. when you were buying it also those watches. Not a flipper. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. When you were buying those two tone with diamonds, right, and the silver, uh, you should have been, uh, you know, uh, telling them that, that you are looking for, let's say, steel sports. Uh, but you have, it, I don't think it should affect it. Uh, and you also have to uh, ask them what was the salesperson that you bought them from. You have to know everybody's name in the AD. Uh, you just like that is a super important thing uh and you want to make sure that they know your name so uh go to the salesperson tell them that you you have a, a long purchase history here and uh tell them which wa watch you want and you actually you have to have a reason to why you need that watch for example if you have a a two-tone date just right you want to say like look summer is coming i uh, i'm looking for a steel watch you know i cannot wear gold all the time i uh i need uh, a submariner uh no date uh i am you know i i'm a customer here i bought watches before uh i'm you know uh i bought it from this this or that salesperson uh and uh yeah and you and you and you tell them and and knowing knowing the the manager or the store owner is super important in fact uh i would go out of my way to find out who like i know uh the manager right and uh Sometimes I see him, I, I wave hello, uh, I show, he, he'd be like, I, sometimes I walk past the store and he's inside, right? And I would wave and then show which watch I'm wearing. So, <laughs> or sometimes he's asking me like, oh, what are you wearing today? And I'm showing like, oh, today I got my panda on or today I got this watch on. So you do, it is paramount. It is paramount to know, but you, you don't want to come off as a, uh, as like a kind of a Karen, you know, like I want to talk to your manager. This is unacceptable. You don't want that. You you want to be super no. cool, super friendly. It's a misunderstanding. Uh, they uh, they definitely, um, you know, you you want to be just super cool. You want to be super cool, super chill. You have yeah. to give them chance. There there might be you know with the with the coronavirus, uh, there's have been a lot of stuff happening. So you there, just have there, to. There's, there's another way to play for Steve. Um, one way that I've considered, if you, are, if you are cunning enough and don't mind stepping over to the dark side and are prepared to look through grey market websites near the AD, find, try and build up a list of watches that have been flipped from that AD. And then I'm not encouraging it, but you can um, use it mm. as persuasion material when dealing with I'm... the AD. Perth, I'm, I'm not sure if, if everybody yeah. is, is like that. May, may I add um, uh, one, one bit of advice which is really important to me? Um, 
not sure if everybody was watching the Archie stream where he mentioned this girl who was basically bullied by Hermes. She she was spending a lot of money yeah. at Hermes, and then uh, she received a call from Hermes uh, HQ uh, that uh, the sales yeah. people are fearing for their sa safety or something like that. Yeah. So in yeah. my opinion, if you if you speak with a manager, um, in in my opinion, the most important uh, sentence is, "Can you help me?" Uh, yeah, not only Can you, also, help me? you know what. Also, you have to mention that you're patient. You have yeah. to say you have to say, "Look, uh, I you know I I purchased here watches before, guys. I'm patient. Uh, you know I'm looking to uh, buy my second watch." Give a reason why and uh, say that. Look, I I would love to get on the waiting list for 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 this watch. If it's not too much trouble, if there is a manager, if you can look into my purchase history to see that I am uh, I have long history of buying from here. Uh, just like uh, I understand that these these watches are hard to get, uh, but uh, I'm willing to wait as long as it takes. Uh, you know, I just, uh, I I bought this watch from you, and I need an alternative. You can say like, you can say like, I'm looking now that the coronavirus is ending. I'm looking to do a lot of travel, so I am looking to add. I I need some kind of a GMT watch. Uh, I can adjust to different countries. Right? Maybe, maybe if you're doing some, if you're doing some international business, you can say, uh, you know, I'm working with people. Uh, I'm working with this company now. They're based in Australia, and I, I always need to know what time it is in Australia while I'm in New York. Let's say I don't know, but that is a thing that, that that happens. And you can say, look, I was looking for that that kind of watch. I know that Rolex has a let's say a GMT Master Two, and has Explorer. Uh, explore it too, and I was looking to get one of those, uh, you know, added to to my arsenal of watches. You know, you have to, you, you like, you have to know which watch you want and why you need it, and how and which watches you're thinking of adding in the future. So, like, you, everything has to have. A solid explanation, and the most important is patience. Okay. Yeah, and show that that you care, and you know you respect. Like, look, yeah. uh, there's a lot of people who come in and try to, you know, they deal with already with a lot of irate customers. So there's no there's no reason to add to the stress. And actually, like past two, I what, from what I heard, past two weeks. Rolex has been doing some internal upgrades to their delivery system. So what happened was um, they haven't, they actually, they haven't been supplying uh, ADs with any watches for two weeks, which is crazy. What is, what is also important is when, when you're talking to the manager, point out that, um, that, that you're a happy customer with them. Uh, that you're a long-term customer with them, if you really are, don't don't make uh, stories up, um, because they will find out. Uh, be honest. No, no. Ask and, ask them to yeah. to look it up in the computer, because they have your whole. Com they should have your purchase yeah. history in the computer. If they if they didn't add certain things, if you have receipts, you probably should tell them like, oh, the, please add these pieces that, that I purchased here. Here's a receipt. I bought this one in 2019. This is what I bought in 2017, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right? Like you, you want to have to make sure that they have your complete history. You can say like, look, I, I mean, I don't want, you know, I, I like you guys. You're close to me. I. Hey, Alex. Oh, Hello. Alex Alex, oh guys, make sure if you're watching, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button. It really helps. And uh, yeah, Steve, thank you for the super chat. And uh, if you have any further questions, feel free to message me. I can see that you're a member, so you're probably in the WhatsApp. If you're not, 
because I don't know. I don't know Roar which of one. The Tiger basically repeats what I've been saying. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid again. Remind the Mr. Uh, manager, the manager you're an existing customer and you appreciate his help. There you go. Yep. Yeah. And Raphael uh, Butterbread also made a, a good comment a little bit. Um, By the way, uh, I don't know how it is in other ADs, but in my AD, like uh, the salespeople, they have to get a permission to sell stainless steel uh, pieces from the manager. It's not yep. just the. Yeah. Exactly, exactly the same problem I've got, except it's worse, Tim. Um, my boutique, I think, has to get approval from he from head office, especially for anything like a GMT or um, a Daytona. So we're in Perth and HQ's over in Melbourne. Hmm. Yeah. Even and then, you've got to be put. You've got to be put forward by an SA as well to begin with. Like you can't just go. I've got all this purchase history. So, I mean, a lot of people like collectors. They are getting put forward because they're not people that genuinely would actually use that watch. Actually, have like a a sort of need. I know we don't obviously yeah. need them, but actually have a uh, like a real world case where they would actually use it like on a daily basis. Yeah. And, well, no, that's why uh, I said like, uh, oh, like if you are if you actually have a need. Like you're working with, a, with, you know, your company, whatever works with, a, with a, I don't know, and their base is in different country where there's a different time zone. And that's a real world need. Like, oh, you had this date just right, but you know, you because of COVID, uh, you're not really going outside anymore, and you figure out that this kind of uh, watch would better suit you uh, because at a glance you can tell. What time it is mm. in a different uh, time zone, which is very convenient for business. So that is a, it is a world, and it's good if you have an actual, real world need, because you it, it's a genuine. It will it will come. You know, it, it's a genuine and real need, and I think um, that that's kind of that that's who they want to sell these kind of watches to. Or, or you can say, look, uh, I'm looking to start traveling all over the world in the next couple of years. I'm looking for this. That's exact. It's also, but it's all, uh, you only should, you should only say that if you are actually trying to do this kind of stuff. Uh, if you, let's say, if you want the Submariner, then uh, th you probably have a real reason why you need it. So, and I think you should, you should be honest. Uh, let me let's just read this chat. Even Hogan Camp, my AD stopped selling Rolex at the location nearest to me as Rolex, wants, as Rolex wants to be the only seller of their watches in downtown Chicago. Rolex Boutique will uh, Rolex Boutique will continue to sell at location in suburbs. Just Sorry, if I can just jump in for two secs, just yes. because that's really piqued my interest, Evan's comment, because he's mm -hmm. in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Kim... Do you remember what happened in with Rolex in Chicago recently? What happened? Oh, oh, oh. CD oh, Peacock? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I well, seriously you know what? hope I think, they I lose think actually that that's why Rolex it'll be a wants warning to do it. Flippers. I think that's why Rolex wants to do it. Because when, when they do, when, when Rolex has their own, let's say, boutiques, right? It's less likely that something like this can happen because they, they can have much more oversight. Whereas, yeah, go, go if to, go, hurry up and go these... to the Patek model, global flipper blacklist. Well, I I think like if they're if they're just going to open up retail stores themselves, their own boutiques, right? Then they can keep all the profit, and they can have a uh, oversight, right? They, so, for example, right now, uh, a boutique has a list of which watches they sold you, right? Mm. And Rolex, I don't know, does Rolex keep? a list they probably do or but maybe they're not they're not as vigilant maybe i think in the next coming years they will be very they will be paying close attention who they sold their watches to and which watches people can get going forward but but most of the rolex boutiques are are not owned by rolex basically all of them Badly. yes so so just imagine um Bucherer. Uh, they would be uh, they would be pleased um, if uh, Vempe would be blackmailed uh, uh, for for selling to flippers and vice versa. 
So those are competing companies, and I doubt that they would uh, be willing to work together on a blacklist of flippers. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's like uh, the Wemper doesn't care if they if they no. sell it to a flipper or a non-flipper, um, but but Rolex does care because it hurts their brand, right? Uh, uh, the the only thing that uh, uh, Wemper cares about whether the they want if they're going to a Wemper or Trudeau or Turno or any of these ads, they they own they probably they're. If they're going to sell a flippable watch, they probably it's in their best interest to bundle it with something else. Right? They don't have to sell any one panda. Nobody deserves a panda, right? They can sell it to anyone they want, right? Except Tim. Uh, uh, except what? Except, except Tim. Tim. Oh, I mean, well, no, they sold it to me. But uh, w what I mean is, like, they uh, they don't have to sell. Like, they, there's no. Like right, they, there's no rule that they have to sell it to anyone. They can just say, "Well, we don't have like whatever, whatever is in the in the window." They they look. They would prefer to sell it to someone who bought who is like their good clients who because it is a limit. It's a li they only get a few of those, right? So they would prefer to sell it to uh, someone who has bought a lot of things for them, uh, who's very profitable client for them. So uh, I think I think that you know I think if Rolex takes uh, takes whole uh, if Rolex starts opening up their own boutiques and only sell their watches through their boutiques, I think they'll have much more control over their brand because i think that's going to be like the next phase you know how there's a there's this whole thing about the in-house movement well the next thing is going to be well does this brand has its own boutiques think about that that could be just like another uh another uh like a cuter say like, oh richard meal only sells watches through their own boutiques, right? So it's that's just another another thing that the brands can be kind of proud of. Not only do we make all our watches, we sell our own watches. There you go. There's just uh, there's another there's another reason why. Uh, Selling through a boutique could be uh, could be profitable. They get they, they, they get to keep all the profits too. So, hmm. uh, roar of the tiger. But the obstacle to a boutique strategy, as described, is the high cost of commercial real estate in the major U.S. cities: L.A., Chicago. Um. You have to pay the piper if you if you want to earn the big bucks. And and I yeah. think Rolex wouldn't wouldn't do that given that it's set up as a charitable trust technically. Ooh, you think you oh, think their a... their boutiques could be tax free? <laughs> <laughs> On no a church, you know yeah. churches they don't pay taxes they, they don't pay taxes right? I, I, this is to, to be honest, I don't. I don't understand this uh, this discussion about Rolex being a char uh, charitable trust. In my opinion, that that doesn't change a lot. It just changes uh, the outlook uh, of the management, which is not focused on 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 uh, on the results of the coming quarter or the qu uh, coming year. Um, well, look, Richard Meal. And Raphael Butterbread says, fun fact, Richard Mille boutiques mostly have only one single watch in store, three at max. Well, men's, but then they have like a, a hundred women's <laughs> uh, watches, but they're able to afford and then they're not, they don't have as much, uh, they're not selling as many watches as Rolex does, right? I, I don't think they're as profitable as Rolex is. Uh, I don't think Richard one... Mille... If they sell one, it's the monthly lease then for the shop. So yeah, there you go. Maybe even no. That's if they sell one, that's for a year. That's a lease for a year. It's a hundred. Like, wait, how much do you think they pay for the? 
How much is that lease? I uh, look. I think they'll they'll be able to. I think Rolex can afford to pay for their own lease. I don't think there'll be a problem because actually, hmm. Also depends if they want to expand the brand. They, I mean, they could they could do a, a Rolex and Tudor boutique. I think this is why they're actually doing a, a, a Tudor boutique. I never heard of these boutiques, right? But let's say if there's going to be, they'll start with one, and they'll only sell uh, the bronze boutique edition at this one boutique, right? And if the pilot program works, they'll look at the numbers, like how much money does it cost to upkeep a boutique, etc. Right? They'll have some real world numbers, and then you know what, maybe in 10 years, Rolex will, will only start selling their watches through their own boutiques. Like, who knows? I mean, the future is uncertain. It all depends on how, uh, for how long they have these contracts, right? Because uh, when uh, when AD signed like a deal with Rolex, right? It, they signed it probably for like five, 10 years. I don't know. But uh, I wonder when are all of their like these are when all of these agreements expire and what is in the in those contracts uh yeah no one buys women models lol yeah i mean <laughs> that's why <laughs> these richard meal boutiques are full of women's watches uh working edge rolex closed boutique in salt lake uh and handed keys back to oc tanner <sighs> Ooh, I mean, when when was that working edge? When when was that? Leo C. Holy crap, Spain just Epstein John McAfee. Yeah, John McAfee, he's a crazy guy. Uh yeah, <laughs> he's a oh my god. He's a he's one crazy individual, uh, Raphael Butterbread, but they're definitely more profitable. They cost like 20K in productions. It's just the insane amount of development you pay for. Yeah. Uh, Richard Mills, I guess. Oh, it was two years ago. Uh, two years ago, were things the same? Were the future of Rolex the same? Who knows? Very interesting. Uh, Roar of the Tiger. American universities, their hospital and medical schools all not for profit corporations all if not most have major holdings in real estate e.g nyu and nyc with can Lungoon home depot yeah uh lucian fourth hi tim Wright. hello sure uh went to the watches of switzerland when i was in nyc last month yeah, I mean, I wonder. I wonder if people will care if the what. I mean, this is where AP is going, right? AP AP now is boutique only. All of the AP watches are now boutique only. News to me. I mean, I think I think that that's their goal. I'm not sure if there are still some small retailers, but uh, they mostly achieve that goal of boutique only. Yes. I think I think uh, I think yeah there, there might be some ex, uh, like agreements that are due to expire in the next couple of years but I feel yeah. like that's that's what they want to do and I wonder if it's going to be more profitable more profitable for them but oh I'm surprised no new APs came out huh uh, Red Shovel, I was in Selfridge, London last week, and they still had some APs. Ah. Well, well, of, course, of, course, of course they would. They're Selfridges. Oh. And it's, ma it's a massive up, up market luxury store. It's, it's almost like the competitor of Harrods in uh, London. But isn't, but isn't it uh, so that technically the space is rented out to AP in Selfridges and Harrods? Ooh, hmm. That I would not know the answer to. Hmm. Uh, but oh, okay, uh, Alex, Royal Oak is boutique only. Okay, so they 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 made the Royal Oak boutique only. That's kind of 
Yeah, I mean, the, the AP can do that because they have so many undesirable watches. But uh, I feel like <laughs> every single Rolex is desirable. Eric uh, says the Bucha in Paris still has AP. Uh, can you imagine if they, uh, if they like, if Rolex made uh, Submariners, GMT Master 2, like basically Steel Sports uh, as boutique only <laughs> <laughs> and everything else, uh, like they just uh, basically they just and Cellini's. Not out of the question. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be crazy. Red Shovel think that term uh, that term is known as AP concession. Uh, oh, and the Boucher in Paris still have APs. Uh, yeah, but they yeah they don't have the best sellers. They just have the janky ones, the stuff that people don't want. The code 911. I mean, sorry, 1159. Uh, I mean, they're both they're both were disasters. So. Kind of fitting. Uh, damn. Mm. Mm. Uh, let's see at the at the poll results. Uh, ooh, we got forty nine votes. Do you baby your watch? And thirty seven percent of the people said yes. While sixty three percent said no, which is a very interesting division. I thought it would be close to fifty fifty, but how many very, participants do we have on, on that poll? So there was 49 participants. Oh, okay. And the results are now posted in the oh, in the chat. It's pretty cool. Yep. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. So about this Black Bay, the bronze, and how it will be able to patina and basically speed up the age process. I mean, in conclusion, I think... I think it's all about to me I am I do like the romance of the of the watch being able to take on the characteristics of its user. So I think maybe in the next in the next years we'll see Rolex kind of pedal away from ceramic. I feel like we might be it, it's possible that we might be going uh, away from ceramic into something that's uh you know that's got some kind of proper properties like aluminum that you know uh it can't shatter but it can scratch and uh maybe maybe not as easily as the but because like my perfect perfect material can you imagine some kind of metal that's got the color, right? Like because see, the problem with stainless steel, right, is that it's the it's the steel color. But if you can get metal to be a certain color without like paint, I think that would be perfect. You know what I mean? Um, you you mean a kind of coating, or uh, the metal have a have a solid color so yes if, if it scratches you know, like, uh, like bronze you know like bronze is yellow right yeah so if a metal was like so for example like if they did uh, a bezel right out of bronze but they filled the numbers with a different metal right that that has a con that has a contrast contrasting color and that way you know they would they would be different colors if they scratched they wouldn't necessarily scratch off the paint because i think that's what makes the uh the aluminum bezels not attractive not so attractive because when they scratch you can see the aluminum underneath right the scratch scratches the paint off of the aluminum because it's just a painted it's a painted thing but if uh, if it wasn't to be able to be scratched off, it just scratched, right? I think it would be a lot different. So that that's the kind of thing I want. That would be so cool. You know what I mean? But there's not that many metals that have a uh, kind of proprietary colors. That you they would involve it would involve some crazy science. Imagine ma making blue steel 
Holy shit. That'd be crazy. You want blue watches? Like, <laughs> I, I think it would be really cool. You know, instead of having watches being PVD code, you know how they, they can make ceramic almost any color? Yep. Not every color, but in many different colors. I would want, like, I know it's crazy talk, but I would want blue steel or, I don't know, green steel. I mean, I wouldn't want the whole watch to be made out of blue steel, but if they made a blue steel bezel, that'd be, that'd be perfect. Because that way, you know, the property of steel is they can't be shattered, like, you know, like the, um, like the ceramic. So that's my that's my pipe dream. That's my dream. I I wish for someday the science to evolve enough to be able to make colored steels. There are some some comments: uh, aluminum uh, anodized and titanium anodized, but that is missing the point because that that is only on the surface. Yeah, if so you scratch it, off. you can see uh, the aluminum inside. So that's why, like, I want. A, a metal to be of a solid color it's, it's crazy i don't know i don't i don't think it's scientifically possible matt porter all bets are off customers uh customer and ad conversation hey i'm not interested in buying a submariner no sir madame but here is a tudor black bay range damn aluminum aluminum logan hall <laughs> aluminum Aluminium. Uh, Jubilee Jubilee. Hey, Tim. Mr. Sh uh, Mr. Stream. Hey, thank you. I'm glad to be back. Uh, and uh, glad R2K, to be doing the streams. R2K uh, 2007 above uh, the Jubilee Jubilee. Oh, Isn't oh. bronze soft? Yeah, no, but the point is is that it's not, it's not whether it's soft. It's when you scratch it, will, it's just like you're not taking off a layer of paint underneath. So making, uh, I, don't know, it's, I don't think it's scientifically possible. It's crazy. Uh, that can scratch off. My Chris Reeves has anodized blue, but that can wear. Yeah. Anodi anodized or uh, painted, etc., etc. It's all, it's, it's no good. You know, like those uh, PVD coated uh, black watches, like this. It doesn't even look good. How oh, can you imagine a, a black steel? That would be so cool. Black steel, polished man. Like it would be. It would look so cool. Why not then black ceramic? <laughs> but ceramic can smash. It. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, but uh, but if you smash your watch uh, on on the bathroom tile, it uh, it doesn't look good if it's a steel or gold watch. No, so... I think it does look cool because I I don't mind the the scratches on steel. Well, but I think it would be really cool to have black steel that that's scratched out. Ah, oh, it'd be so cool. I think that I think there's ways to do steel that's darker in color but it does i think it it does make it more brittle or something you know like they have all all those fancy different kinds of steels um they're like folded over or like oh you know there's even like this blue steel actually hold on hold on i have this my uh the the chris reeves knife that i bought from jj it's got some crazy colored steel or some kind of metal. It's got these layers. But the... <laughs> there is a there is a good comment Damascus from R2K uh, 2007, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's exactly spot on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ancient men invented steel because bronze sucked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> look, I don't think it's the same kind of bronze as we had back then but you know what uh some people say that the, the steel that uh people were, were making in like medieval ages was better than the steel we have now uh because they were really messing around with it uh more uh, who knows who knows but 
Uh, bronze looks good at the start, turns into a murky mess. Yeah, that's kind of what happened to my flask. It looks pretty bad now. Um, yeah, but but if you rub it uh, like enough, it does start to take off the that murky patina, and it does reveal um, a shiny shiny undercoat. I wonder, does it take off like layers of? Huh, that's that's weird. Like when it patinas, when you rub it off, does it like take off like some atoms of uh, of this bronze? Of course. Shit. So basically, so can you eventually you will be able to rub rub the r- rub right through the bracelet? That's crazy. <laughs> that's, that's gonna take a long time, I guess. Yeah, I'll take I'll take. But like someday you you can you can do that. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Jubilee, Jubilee, yeah, not uh, my sort of style too, Tommy, but can't they just do a white dial Black Bay 58 and be done with it? Jubilee, Jubilee, you have to watch this stream from the beginning because we did have, uh, I, you know, we did have a lot of speculation for, for why, uh, I mean, I, I, I made a speculation of why they did it in bronze and I think you will find it interesting and maybe and maybe even plausible Rafael but in a, just a century ago steel was worth more than most precious metals because it was a it was so hard to manufacture mm-hmm. yeah and i think uh the manufacturing was uh a lot more kind of care was put into it because uh i mean they weren't making these swords that people relied on like life or death uh Go to Steel Nerd's website. Steel is far better, superior today. I mean, look, I, I was I, I was looking at like these YouTube videos, right? And there's these guys, they're making swords, right? <laughs> and uh, they're struggling, man. They're struggling. They don't know what the hell they're doing. Uh, maybe the steel could be better. I mean, maybe I, I, I'm confusing the quality of steel or etc with uh with like the sword making maybe the sword making was better back then but it's also like they knew which which steel to use uh in certain conditions because like like every different steel has different properties and certain properties could be better like i wouldn't be surprised that if rolex is using the the steel that's best when it looks when it looks good, when it's polished and it doesn't tarnish, but if this steel was used in some other uh, for some other reason, it wouldn't prove to be the best steel for that for that purpose. So probably they're using the best steel for that purpose. It's, anyways, it's it's complicated. It's complicated. Jubilee, Jubilee. Only two fifty eights are worth buying. Uh, is a black bay, uh, uh, the black dial and the blue dial. What the fuck is silver? <laughs> Silver made cases and bronze. They're trying to pull off precious metals in budget price. Yeah. Watch the beginning of the stream. I think you'll find it interesting. In my interesting theory. Uh, a game theory. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. All right. But I think I'm going to wrap it up here because uh, we're going to, I'm going to do Archie stream in the, I don't know. Well, he'll probably start in like, who knows? He'll start in the next half hour. But I have to go eat, and I'll see you guys in a couple minutes. Oh wait, how does that work? Hey, I want to thank everybody who joined me. Perf Luxury, Jonathan. Thank you guys for coming onto the show and talking to me about this. Black Bay 58 Bronze, a watch nobody asked for, but with some very interesting tech. Uh, Jubilee, Jubilee. Uh, See you guys on RG Stream. Before you leave, make sure to upvote. It really helps out my ratings. And uh, yeah, and I'll see you guys later.